All right, guys, so here we are. We're going to start our um, primary source for India and Europe. Bless you. All right, document one. Here we go. So I've been Batua, Moroccan Muslim jurist, uh, traveler and geographer from the travels in Asia and Africa, 1325 to 1354, describing the city of Constantinople. So what can we tell already? What do we can tell? Cole? Um, he's a traveler and he's going to Constantinople. Okay, so it's a journal. All right, what else do we know about it? What do we know? There's a big thing we need to find. Okay. Okay, he's Moroccan, so he's Muslim. Okay, so he's a Muslim. And what else? Going off of that, what else do we know? Regan. He's going to Constantinople in 1325. Who's in control of it? <coughs> No, it's just named after Constantine. Who, what empire is in charge of it? Did you all work on that chemistry project and on my stuff? Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. The Byzantines are in control of Constantinople at this point. So Constantinople is under the Byzantines, and the Byzantines are who? Are what? They're new Romans, but what religion are they? They're Christian at this point. They're about to split, though, so you're not wrong, Beck. Okay. Rip off Romans. Abin Batua is a, I like him. We're gonna, he's a big part of this stuff. Um, we come back to him a lot. Anyway, all right, the city is enormous in size and in two parts separated by a great river, the Golden Horn, in which there is rising and ebbing tide. Okay, so it's an enormous city. Okay, so a large population. In former times, there was a stone bridge over it, but it fell into ruins and the crossing is now made in boats. So, if the bridge, uh, stone bridge over it fell, and, uh, and the crossing is now made of boats, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Bad. bad. It shows weakness. The part of the city on the eastern bank of the river is called Istanbul and contains the residence of the emperor, the nobles, and the rest of the po uh, population. So, east side is what? Is the wealthiest. Okay. Never eat. E is on. Um, it's on the Asian side. Okay. Its bazaars and streets are spacious and paved with flagstone. Each bazaar has gates which are closed upon at night, and in the majority of the artisans and sellers in them are women. So, is this a nice place to be or a bad place? Nice and clean. Okay, the city lies at the foot of the hill, which projects about nine miles into the sea, its breadth being the same or greater. On the top of the hill, there is a citadel in the emperor's place, palace, not place. Uh, around this hill runs the city wall, which is very strong and cannot be taken by assault from the seafront. Within its circuit, there are about 13 inhabited villages. The principal church is in the midst of this part of the city. Okay, so if you're going to live in Constantinople, you want to live where? Eastern side, okay, and they're Christian, obviously, because they're talking about churches, they're Christians. The second part on the western bank, so if it's on the western bank, what continent is it in? Europe, it's the European side, uh, is called Galata and is reserved for the Frankish Christians who dwell there. There are different kinds, including Genos, Venetians, Romans, parentheses, other Italians, and the people of France. They are subject to the authority of the king of Constantinople, who sets over them one of their own number of whom they approve. So, you have a king. Then below them, you have a Frankish ruler. The people approve. All right, uh, who sets over them uh, one of their own number of whom they approve, and they call him, uh, they call the Combs or the Count. They are bound to pay tax every year to the king of Constantinople, but often they revolt against him, and he makes war on them until the Pope makes peace between them. Ah, does this sound like an effective system or a dysfunctional system? Dysfunctional. Very dysfunctional. 
very dysfunctional. So it's conflict between two types of Christians. Um, they are all men of commerce, and the harbor is one of the largest in the world. I saw there about a hundred galleys and other large ships, and small ships were too many to be counted. The bazaars in this part of town are good, but filthy. And the small and very dirty river runs through them. Their churches are, are too, are, the churches too are filthy and mean. <laughs> so is this a good part of town or a very poor part of town? It's a poor part of town. Okay, so if you were in Constantinople with my man here, would you rather be on the eastern or the western? Eastern. Is this pro-European uh, or anti-European? Anti. anti. How funny, right? All right, here we go. Document one. What is the subject of the piece, Charlie? Let's see. Okay, subject is uh, description. of Eastern and Western Constantinople. Okay, who's the audience? Who is the audience? Olivia. Kind of. Other Muslims I will take. Who is the audience? What do you got, McKinnon? <laughs> okay. How about people, uh, what do you got, Regan? Okay, guys, it's from Travels in Asia and Africa. It's a what? It's a book. It's a book. So who is he writing this for? Yeah, it's for the uh, it's for other Muslims reading his book. Okay, so what is the purpose of the piece? What is the purpose of the piece, Antonia? It's to compare Eastern and Western. Okay, I'll take a comparison. It's not Rome. Even though I, yeah, I was like, yeah, absolutely, Constantinople. All right, who's the speaker? Who is the speaker? Andrew, uh, Drew. Batu, yeah. Okay, you need to know his name. He's a big deal. There are two major explorers during period three and period four. You know the latter. He's the first one. He's a Muslim who goes into Christian lands and makes comments about the Christians there. And they're amazing. Because, as you saw on the western coast, has Europe pulled it together? No. They are dirty and disgusting, and they're playing with sticks. The Muslims have made incredible inventions, have uh, sophisticated... Uh, plumbing systems, much, much cleaner, much more sanitary. So he wanders around Europe and is just completely repulsed by the disgusting things he sees. He literally carries soap with him and washes his hand all, every, like, hour and two, which is awesome because he's the first germaphobe in the world. It's pretty hilarious. The second guy is going to be a Christian going to Asia. Who is it? Marco Polo. Yeah, these are your two big explorers, and those are two big names. So Ibn Batua gives us great insight into what's happening in Europe. Marco Polo is giving us complicated insight into China and Asia. All right, tone. What is the tone of the piece? What do we got, Sarah Grace? Uh. What's the tone? Okay, so what is he doing? It's Mean Girl Day. What is he doing? How does that have to do anything with Mean Girls? Kaylee. He's like yes, he's judging them. See, she got my reference. Okay, she, he's, uh, it's awfully judgy. Okay. Um, critical, I would say. And pretty harsh at times, don't you think? 
Mean church? Have you ever heard of a church being described as mean? Yeah. <laughs> All right, point of view. Why is he writing this when he wrote it? What is the reason behind it? What do we think? I'm going to talk to you, Reagan. I'm going to call on Amanda. Um, I like your shirt, by the way. To inform uh, uh, lessons and the book. So, what? Uh, well, he's not saying, well, in my hometown we do this, well, here they're doing that. What is he doing? He's not comparing Muslims to Christians. What is he doing? Oh my god, that was a huge hit, people. Calder! Uh, uh, he's... Come up with something. Uh, he's trying to inform the Muslims. Nope. Okay. Mm, get in there. Grace. Uh, he's describing the city of Constantinople. Okay. A so, little bit more. Okay. Um, so, like... He's a Muslim he's, in a foreign city filled with a bunch of Christians. What is his point of view? Drew. He's, like, judging the city of No, because he's not talking about Muslim cities. He's talking just about Constantinople. Regan. He's kind of, I guess, an outsider in the city, so he's experiencing things with an unbiased point of view and contrast. No, everyone's biased. No one's I mean, unbiased. You know what I, mean, like... I have bias against you people because I don't understand your life. You have bias against me because you think I'm old. Everyone is biased. We just try to look by on. What is his point of view? Guys, who the hell is he talking about? Ah, oh, but it's not Constantinople Christian. to a degree, Abby. Yes, what is he doing to them? Okay, and what is his outcome? What does he think is better? He thinks Eastern is better because Western are what? Poor and dirty. Yes, okay. He believes Western, nope. He believes Eastern Christians <coughs> are more successful and organized than their Western counterparts. Okay, so does he respect Europeans? No, absolutely not. All right. Thank you, Abby. All right, here we go. Byzantine Patriarch Anthony, in a letter uh, to the Grand Prince Vasily I of Moscow, defending the Emperor, 1395. All right, so what do we know? What do we know? Philip. There you go. So he is the, the I'm going to put in quotes, the Pope of uh, Eastern Orthodox. There you go. They call them the poppy, the father. Isn't that so cute? Okay, Byzantine paint. What else do we know? 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 Jack. The emperor was in trouble. Ooh, why? Like, you know what it says to Oh, touche. So something shady went down. He's in trouble. Good one, Jack. I did not even put that together. Good job. All right, what else? Oh my god. What do we got? Antonia. It's a letter. It's a letter. You're right. It is a letter. What else though? <laughs> Cole. Um, it is in, uh, it's in Russia. Well, he's writing a letter to the Russians. What do we know about Russians at this time? What are they? The what? No, they're not barbarians. Barbarians are gone. Yeah, they are. They're Eastern Orthodox people. They're still Eastern Orthodox. 
All right. So the Holy Roman Emperor, the Holy no, sorry, I just added a bunch of words there. The Holy Emperor has a great has a great place in the church, for he is not like other rulers or governors of other regions. The Holy Emperor, who is the Holy Emperor? Of who? Where is the Holy Emperor, people? Where do you think the Holy Emperor is? Constantinople. Yes. It is, he is in Constantinople. A great uh, the Holy Emperor has a great place in the church. So is he liked or not liked? He is liked, for he is not like other rulers or governors of other regions. This is so because from the beginning the emperors established and confirmed the true faith in all the inhabited world. What is the true faith? Christianity. In the inhabited word, they convoked in the innumerable councils and confirmed and decreed the acceptance of the pronouncements of the divine and holy canons regarding the correct doctrines and government of Christians. Canons. Does anyone know what canons are? Nah. What's a canons? You get canons um, after death. Like Mother Teresa was just canons. She's now a uh, saint. saint. Yes, sainthood. Okay. Now the biggest difference, and this is a, an important thing to know, um, the biggest difference between um, Eastern Orthodox and Christian and Roman Catholicism is that Roman Catholicism do, we don't pray to saints. Okay. We have saints. We look to them for guidance and stuff, but we don't pray. Saints are not on the same level as, like, Jesus, okay? Mary is not on the same level as Jesus, okay? Jesus is Jesus, and then we have a sub-tier of your saints and, like, Mary. Does that make sense? Okay? In Eastern Orthodox, you have Jesus, top, okay? So Jesus is at top. Then right below him immediately is Mary. Then immediately below Mary, you have all of your saints. So... In Eastern Orthodox, everyone's kind of clustered around Jesus, okay? Everyone is really, really important. So you can pray to a saint, and the saint is going to answer you back. In Christian, in Roman Catholicism, if I pray to a saint, okay, the saint goes, talks to Jesus for me, like, hey, Jesus, you know, my girl Sam Bennett needs a little help right now. Can you, like, help her out? And Jesus is like, hell yeah, I'm going to help him out. Okay, and then Jesus come talks to me. Does that make sense? Okay, in Roman Catholicism, you call up a saint by like, hey, saint. Then they come and they uh, tell the message to Jesus on your behalf. Does that make sense? In Eastern Orthodox, you pray to the saint and the saint responds and has powers or can change things and like does things. Does that make sense? In Eastern Orthodox, saints have a lot of power and a lot of influence. Roman Catholicism, they are literally a little telephone service to Jesus and to God. Hello? This is why the whole thing splits. Because Roman Catholicism doesn't believe in saints. Eastern Orthodox won't give them up. Okay? And that's why the Great Schism happens, and that's why it splits. Yes? Um, did, did Mother Teresa know that she was going to become a saint before she died? Like, did they tell her? No, you're technically not told. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's Mother Teresa. Like, the woman wore the same shoes for 70 years. Yeah, she died at 80. Saving the poor and saving the wild. Oh my God, sweetie. Don't focus on the shoes. She's an incredible woman. She deserves to be a saint. No, no, no. I was just wondering if they, like, had told her. I don't know. I think everyone, when she died, I think everyone kind of knew. Become a saint, you need to have two miracles where one would be a martyr and stuff, so, like, they didn't know. Your parents are proud. Your parents are proud. Look at you. I'm not, I'm not Catholic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a big deal. She was one of the fastest to be uh, sainthood, too. She was the first, one of the fastest to be canonized. All right. All right, so uh, they convoked numerous canons regarding the correct doctrines in the government of Christians. They struggled boldly against the heresies and imperial degrees. Together with councils established the metropolitan sees of the archpriest and divisions of their provi provinces and delineation for their districts. Okay, the biggest things you need to know, uh, imperial degrees, decrees, 
Okay, is from where? Imperial. Where do we think those are coming from? What? Imperial. They're coming from Rome. They're coming from Rome. Remember, Rome is going to be the center of Christianity. Okay, Eastern Orthodox is going to start their own kind of thing, but they're coming from Rome. Uh, for this reason, the emperors enjoyed great honor and position in the church, for even if, by God's permission, the nations, primarily the Ottoman Turks, have constricted the authority and domain of the emperor, still to this day the emperor possesses the same charge from the church and same rank and the same prayers from the church. Okay? So, Byzantine Empire, collapse, <coughs> Turks take over, and allow... Christian empire, Christian emperor to rule. That's been nice of them. True, not true. Um, the Baileus, note the Greek term for emperor, huh? Sure. Is anointed with the great myrrh and appointed Baileus an autocrater of the Romans and needed indeed for all Christians. Everywhere the name of the emperor is commemorated by patriarchs and metropolitans and bishops, wherever men are called Christians. So is he respected only in the Byzantine, only in um, Western, Eastern uh, Asia? Or is he respected around the world? He's respected around the world. In which uh, everywhere the name of the emperor is com commemorated by the patriarchs and metropolitans, bishops, wherever men are called Christians, a thing which no other ruler or governor has ever received. Indeed, he enjoys such a great authority all over all that even Latins themselves, who are not in, com in communion with our church, render him the same honor and submission when they did in the old days when we were united with us. So Latins, who are they talking about? Romans. So they were even respected by the Roman Empire, uh, the Roman uh, Christians. Submission, which they did in the old days, reunited with us. So much more to do with Orthodox Christians. Oh, such recognition to him. Okay, so what's the subject? What is the subject? What do we got, Robert? Defending the emperor of um, Byzantine Empire. Defending. <coughs> Emperor of Byzantine Empire. Okay, who's the audience? Who's the audience? Who's the audience, Megan? Nope. Nope. Remember what it is. What is it? Uh, Raylan. There you go. Because it's a letter. All right, purpose. What is the purpose of the piece? What do we got? Jack. No, what is the purpose of the piece? What is the purpose of the piece? Robert. Um, sort of. What, Drew? Regan, Regan, put it away. Thanks. Okay, show the importance of it. Uh, a little bit broader than that. Cool. No, it's not an update. Sarah, Grace. To show achievements and admiration people have for the. For the leader, for the emperor, is that what they're calling me? Yeah. Speaker, who is the speaker, Beck? There you go. Okay, what is the tone of the piece? What is the tone of the piece? What do we got? Um, Sam. Um, 
Oh my god, that's not a tone, people. What would be one, Sam? Defensive. Defensive. What would be another one? Boastful. Yeah, he's really like, wow, look at all the things he's done. What's another thing that we could say, Abby? Pushy. Pushy. Yeah, he believes what he thinks is right, correct? All right, what is the point of view? Why is he writing it when he wrote it? Why is he writing it when he wrote it? Why? Regan. <laughs> okay, but we don't know explicitly why he's in trouble, so we can't get him out of trouble. Why? To make the emperor look good. Yeah, but it's kind of too vague. What is the point of view? Why is he writing it when he wrote it? Why is this guy writing this wonderful letter about this uh, poppy? What do you got, Antonia? To appraise him. Ow. Philip. Like, You've no mouth. Okay. It's drawing comparison. Huh? No, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, drawing comparisons from uh, Orthodox to Rome to Romans in respect levels from around the world. Okay, is he saying that he's respected even if you're a Christian or not? Does he sound like he res respects the Pope of the other of this other sect? Do you think our Greek Orthodox respect the Roman Catholic Pope? No. See ya. Have a good day, guys. Get some sleep tonight, or not, maybe not go to bed as early as.